I'd like to take a moment and thank Avalon King for sponsoring today's video. We're out here in Talmadge, Ohio, and we're gonna be driving this 1957 Chevy across the country, 2,000 miles. We gotta make sure that we are protected. So we're gonna be armor coating the windshield, all the bumperettes, and other awesome stuff on this car that you guys may not think that ceramic coating will protect. Getting ready for the day. Putting on my apron that Justin might not get back. All right, so we're getting back to work. We're gonna be tackling this rear end this morning, getting it all buttoned up and just moving forward. I wouldn't tackle it, it might hurt a little bit. It might hurt your shoulder. That's true. Anyway, we're gonna get it all bolted down and start assembling it. We've got a third member that's gotta go in, got axle shafts that need to go in, brakes, everything. So this is gonna be a complete axle assembly here in just a little bit. Did Emery still washer? Oh, she has a washer and a nut. <laughs> All right, so we've got the U-bolts on. The cool thing about these gaskets is they're reusable. They've got a rubber seal. You don't have to use any sealant. That way we don't have to wait 24 hours. See, it's got that seal. We put this on. As soon as it's tight, you can actually put oil in this. We're gonna wipe out the inside, and then I'm gonna put the third member in. That way we can slide the axles in and start seeing this housing become a rear axle assembly. How tight you got these? Like tight, tight, almost broke real tight. Like where they don't fall out. Like right before they break, just stop like rear end doesn't fall out tight. I'm just taking some wax and grease remover, just wiping the inside. That way if there's any residual stuff from when this was manufactured, it's gonna wipe it out. So I'm gonna lather this up in wax and grease remover and I'm gonna shove it through the axle tube and just try to push out anything might be in that tube. Just like that. Tighten it up and that's all you gotta do. That lube blocker gasket will keep everything sealed up perfect. And the cool thing about these curry rear ends this has got a machine finish, or it's got a machine face that's perfectly flat. I thought of everything. So while Robbie's tightening up the third member, I'm getting this box open. It's the brakes, we got rid of the drums, we're going to discs, and this right here is the kit you need to do it. You definitely don't want to over tighten your bolts, so I'm doing them all by hand. And I'm doing them just in a sequence where it clamps this third member down evenly. Reading the instructions. I think he's turned a new leaf. So while Robbie's figuring out the back, how the conversion goes, we want to start opening up the front and getting it all separated from left to right. I'm actually going to suck the bearing into the housing and then I'm going to take the plate off because we're using these conversion brackets. I want to use the factory clamp bracket first to tighten it in. See, we still have a little ways to go. I'm going to tighten it up and then I'm going to pull it back off here in just a minute. So you use a spacer because there's a 16th inch gap when you tighten down the lock plate for the bearing and that takes up that space. So in this kit, it comes with three different spacers. So we're starting with the medium size. Getting ready to install the gearbox and it's shipping column. That means you gotta pull the column out. Better just saws all it off. Saws all up by that bracket. Yeah, I would just take a saws on and just bzzz. We probably shouldn't have done, <laughs> done that. Because this holds the steering wheel in place so it doesn't sit there and flop around. Oopsies. So you're sure that this can be cut off? So what I'm cutting off is this clutch knuckle that someone added on. It's in the 70s, it came out this style. It's manual clutch, tube goes on it. Here on the motor side, there's another socket ball that looks like this that screws into that. Pipe goes in between here and there, has an ear up here, it looks to the pedal. So when you push the pedal, it moves this. And down here, closer to the motor, there's another ear that comes off. The rod goes there to the bell housing. So when you push this down, it rotates like this and pushes the clutch in to be able to disengage or engage the clutch to shift your gears. We don't need that, it's in our way. So I'm just gonna go. Got the bracket off. Got the frame cleaned up. Now let's see if we can install this steering box. Oh yeah. That's going real nice. Don't want to tighten them up, just snug them up so it's not flopping. Cause we might have to take it back off to put the rag joint on because I don't think there's enough room between here and this column that I cut out right there. I don't think there's enough room to put the rag joint in there. So we'll probably have to take this off, put the rag joint on, slide it up on the steering wheel, and then bolt it up. This side's in. I've got to drill out the rotors just a little bit so that they'll fit on these shouldered studs. So I've got to wait for a drill bit. I'm going to come to the passenger side and get this axle installed, get the brackets to the point where 
other side is, and we'll do the discs and the spacers and everything else. Getting the steering all set in place. I already pulled the cotter key out that holds this set screw in. Now I'm removing the set screw. Cotter key. I call them Carter keys. <laughs> How's that go? Tomato, tomato? Cotter is C-O-T-T-E-R. Yeah, but isn't it tomato, tomato? I mean, same thing. So you have to make sure you have this bottom piece and the knuckle in right, because it's ground down. It'll fit tight around the sh uh, shank of the steering. Remove this. Hillbilly lost the lineup pin. Is it in your pockets? No. Or wait. It landed in my pocket. Yes, wait. I went to pull the, move it to where I could see if the outer ground down piece where the shank goes is in the right spot. And when I did it, boom, spring hit the ground, but lineup pin went in my pocket, I guess. Went out and got a measurement of the tie rod end. I'm gonna put these at the same measurement. So that way it's, oh, it's a lot closer for alignment. So it's easier for the alignment shop. So I've got the driver's side brakes all finished up. We got the brake line ran. I'm just getting this passenger caliper put on and, and rotor. All I've got to do is put my hose here, and then I can start on the brake lines. But with the Summit Racing disc brake kit for this Ford 9-inch, I was able to figure it out, and I even read the instructions. So, just got my brake line to install, and we'll have this side done. It's locked in. <sighs> Quiet. Got it. Now I can get my clip in. So when you get these brake line kits, they fold them in half with a real nice radius so it doesn't kink. So you just gotta straighten it back out. Gotta try to get this into there, and then we're gonna hook the brake line up to it. And this is our main brake line that goes to the front. So this comes back into a T that we'll get, and then the T will split off to each side. Okay, so I'm gonna rem remove this the whole steering linkage now. I'm gonna be in the way of putting the motor in and brake lines and stuff, so I'm just gonna get it removed out of the way before it really becomes in the way. Why'd you put it up? Put it up so I can put it all together, so now when I put it back up, it's two nuts to cure it instead of doing all of that that we went through already. Okay, so I have to remove the gearbox. It's in the way. The brake line runs down behind it, so I gotta remove it so we can get the brake line in. Okay, I gotta get the filler neck removed out of the car so I can get the rubber, old rubber, part of the old rubber hose off and just get it kind of cleaned up inside and out. This is where the gas lid is. It's in part of the fin. It's not on the side of the car, it's not back here under the license plate, it's right in the fin. I just grabbed a self-tapping screw out of my bolts and nuts grab and go kit. And Andy brought it down for us. So this is where our fuel filter is gonna go. Um, we're gonna run both lines in. We've got a fuel line in and a return line back out of this fuel filter. So that's gonna make things super nice. Here in a minute, I'm gonna run the fuel lines to it. And then all we've gotta do is connect from here to the actual engine. In a little bit, we're gonna have the fuel tank completely done. I've got the brake line in. We've got the rear end completely done. I just gotta put the two brake lines on it and we're gonna have everything from the rear to the center of the car done. All right, this is not cross-threaded. This is going in perfect. It's just a little bit angled. It's no big deal. It's just a breather tube. So tighten this barb up. We're gonna put a hose from here, probably up top. It's just a breather for the rear end. Finally got this, all the screws out from the filler neck. I have to push back in and get the rubber line off of it in order to finish it all the way out. It's stopping me. So I'm just on the summit site going through, picking some more parts that we had kind of slipped our mind as we were picking our initial order. Um, so some lug nuts, a couple brake line fittings, just to get everything tightened up so we can get moving. Wow. All right, there's what was stopping me. Now it's ready to come out. Oh, ho, ho, there it is. We're going to a assure that we can get gas into the tank because we're going to be needing a lot of it to go those 2,000 miles. Getting this all cleaned up so that way the new hose slides on like, like it's supposed to. This is the original pipe. Getting it all cleaned up inside. I'm just taking a little bit off, cutting a couple of threads off of the shackle bolts because they're, you probably couldn't stick a half a piece of paper half thickness of a piece of paper through there. We don't want any kind of rubbage and cause wear on the frame that's not necessary. Yeah, that grade eight alloy seal doesn't hold up to a brand new blade. Time to install it back into its hole. Do, 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 do. It's in. Now let's see how many of these I can put in without dropping them. It's like playing Operation, but do not lose a screw. Okay, so I got the filler neck back in. Time to get this hose installed and then the breather vent installed. So I'm gonna put a little bit of lube on this O-ring so we don't rip it or put a nick in it or anything. And now all I have to do is just tighten up the screws or the hose clamps 
And put the breather on. Just hook up the last hose, which is the breather hose. We're just trying to get all the parts and pieces laid out so that we can get these brakes all put together. All right, so we've got our bracket on and our dust shield. I'm gonna get all the bolts on, get them tightened up. Gotta use some spacers. So that's what I'm figuring out right now is where the spacers go. And then after that, we should be able to tighten this all up. So I'm hooking up our rear brake line. So I got our brake tee on here. I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna trim this line, get it flared, get a piece on it, and then make a short line for this side as well. Just getting stuff measured out. Just putting the new over, uh, coilover strut in, the bottom part of the st strut through the A-arm. So we're just using our Summit Racing flaring tool. And you go through operation one, and that makes sure it's flat to the die. There's operation one for our single flare. And then for our double flare, come over here to this die. You flip it open and look at that, a perfect bubble flare every time. So the cool thing about these QA1 coilovers, it eliminates the use of the super long factory style coil that is a super, super miserable thing to get installed in here. And then you don't have to put a shock in between it and I think the ride quality is gonna be much, much better. Once we get the upper control arm mounted back up, we're gonna adjust the coilovers. And Justin's gonna help us out on that because this is something that he definitely excels at. I'm glad the lower control arms has that stabilizer bracket. Oh, because you can hook it to it? Hook it to it and suck it right up, no problems. No questions asked. Yep, upper's done. Cool. That is so bottomed out. I think we need to pull that bump stop out. Those bump stops that I fought so hard on getting installed. He's gone, I'm gonna try it again. No! <laughs> Just keep working on other stuff. It's almost in. Rob says move, remove them. A couple more turns to go and I'll be matching Rob's right side. That's not the final set. And right there is where it matches where how high Robbie's is. Like I said, that's not the final adjustment. There we will be doing more adjustment adjustments on them. Once we get all the weight put in there, motor, tranny, hood, then we'll get adjusted to the final uh, ride height. I just love this flaring tool. It saves so much time. So we start on operation zero and that makes it flush. So we have enough meat there for the flare. We snug this up. We have three sixteenths lines. So we go to operation one for three sixteenths. Push to operation two for three sixteenths. And a perfect flare every time. Well, I have the hydraulic version that isn't as simple as that. You can go. Man, I love it, but. Now, I do love the hydraulic cool. version for in car repairs. Yeah, yeah, and, like, no, no, no. Doing no that. This is super simple. But if you're building lines at the bench, this is uh, this is the cat's meow. And this is available at Summit Racing. Summit Racing branded product. You guys hear it. And this, my friend, is how you pack bearings with no bearing packer. Stick your fingers in the lube. Make sure you get a lot. And you start forcing it in there. The whole point of this is to pack your bearing. And you're working until you can see the grease coming out of it. You can see how the grease is coming out of it. That's when you know that your rollers are packed. And I'll go around and do this two or three times. You can see that it's greased all the way around. So what I'll do is I'll roll it up and I'll go back around it again and it'll be packed. Hey Billy, what are you, what do you have going on over there? Do you want some bearing with that grease? You know what, boy? I'll tell you. We cleaned the oils, the packaging oils off the disc. Now we're installing it. Oh, it's on. And then I need that grease gun. Uh, set in the bearings. I've got the driver's side all done. Preload set. It turns, it rolls, and I'm starving. So Hillbilly's gonna finish that up. So we almost forgot to put the calipers on before we go to lunch. We're all hungry, it was getting in a hurry. So we have to get this done. And then lunchtime. So I jokingly said that we were ready to go to lunch. I forgot that it needed calipers. So the calipers are now on, We've got the brake lines in. So this front suspension's done. Yeah, yeah. So now it's time to go to lunch. <clears throat> I'm getting the fuel lines all ran up to my filter that I already installed. I've got a vent tube. I don't know where to put it yet. So we're just gonna button it up out of the way. But we have wheels and tires coming. So this thing is gonna get on the ground on its own tires, its own wheels, and we're gonna be moving it. We'll tell you when to head over to Summit's YouTube channel so you guys can watch us build the engine and transmission assembly, and then we're gonna be putting it back, or we're gonna be putting it into the car, but that's all gonna be over on Summit's channel. Got a lot to do, but we're gonna get back to work. So that's how we're gonna do this. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna route under here and just kind of hug the brake line. I've gotta go around all these obstructions. I'll probably remove this, get that out of the way, come across here, then into my filter. 
We got the fuel line and the return line hooked up and done all the way to the filter. So from here back is done. Expertly installed. All right, so we found the wheels that we're gonna use and we're gonna be running some BFG. We're gonna be running some BFG red lines on these. I think this, this combination with some American racing wheels and the BFGs, it's gonna look awesome. All right, so we let the car down off the lift. We're gonna be getting into the trunk, trying to figure out how to get the struts put on, take the old one off, and Hillbilly's gonna be taking the door latches out of the doors because we gotta figure out how to either get those to work or we gotta try to overnight a new set. Uh, these locks got beat out, so I just have to use a flathead screwdriver to get into the trunk. Oh good, it opened. There's a bunch of junk. Oh, there's the strut up there. I'm vacuuming out the trunk. Boom! Boom! You gotta check this out. Does that work? The wing window works with the roller. No way! I thought that thing was rusted shut. Well, I had to give it a little bit of oomph to get it broke free, but I didn't know they were that way. That's cool. Don't break that. We need it. Now that I got the window and the window track out of the way, this should just pop in. Just like that. And there it is. The window regulator, it's not regulator, this is the latch. These two screws were rusted so bad that the Phillips heads were rusted gone, so I put a Phillips screwdriver in there, and as soon as I barely even twisted, it just spun the teeth out of it, so I just took a grinder, made a slit for a flathead screw, to make a flathead screwdriver, and it's just breaking the bolt more. Yeah, it's just breaking the bolt. So I'm just gonna cut the heads off them, get these removed, because Robbie has new ones coming, and then this door will be done, except out here, it needs to be tapped out a little bit. Trying to get this washer off. And it's gonna just pop out. Oh, oh. Ha, it works. This one's not as rusty as the other ones, so it's working. I gotta see if this window works. It's getting hot right here. Oh, there we go. Oh my gosh. <laughs> it works. No, can you roll it back up? Baby. Robbie! Even cooler. <laughs> it's so crazy how that comes back and down. So we're gonna have all the windows working. Even the boss's wing window is not working. Oh? Yes. I'm just getting the one shock installed. Trying to get the strut started. The side's done. We're getting pretty dang close. We've got a lot of stuff accomplished today. This car is gonna move on its own wheels. we are working on the brake booster and clutch pedal. Yeah, clutch pedal's about to come out. The brake booster is almost out. So now I'm outside the car, as you noticed. Got one washer to take off and then the brake pedal comes out. There is the, what used to be called the master cylinder. Now I just gotta pop the Carter key off on the inside to take the rod off. So we can put the brand new rod and brand new brake cylinder in. Time for the new brake booster. And master cylinder. So we're upgrading it because the, the old uh, master cylinder didn't have a brake booster. And for you, you that don't know what a brake booster is, a brake booster makes it towards a vacuum assist braking. So that way you don't have to press the pedal to the moon it's as hard as you can to get it to slow you down. The vacuum makes it to where it's easier to push, to where you're only pushing halfway to the moon. I'm putting these brackets on, so that way it will adapt from this kind of uh, style, which the booster goes into the firewall and the nuts go on the inside of the firewall. This type of car, the uh, nuts go on the outside of the firewall, and the whole brake pedal assembly, which is the, all the bracketry that holds the brake pedal and the steering wheel in place, goes through the, as a stud, well to that bracket that goes through the firewall. So we have to adapt from this style to that style. Beautiful. It's that time for the new brake booster to go into place. These brake boosters, when you use that adapter plate, it comes with an extender rod. The actual rod is that far too short from the pedal. That's when these come in handy. Okay, so I got the rod adjusted where I needed it. Take the booster back off now. Sorry, my life, on, off, on, off, on, off. It has come off and then I can put it on there and it should be able to go in, have to go in one more time. And that's the final time. It's the final countdown. So now I can finish building it and I gotta put this guy on. Which this is a proportioning valve. 
So we just went out to the retail store, got us some flat steel. What I'm gonna do is basically build a band-aid where that strut mount is busted out of the floor. Because we don't weld inside the shop, we're gonna bolt it. We're gonna make a bracket. We're gonna bolt it up through the floor that the strut can mount to. That way, when we get back to Utah, we can fix it correctly, but this will get us home. So this is going to be turned into a strut bracket, right? Meow. <laughs> this is what you do when you don't have a torch. You use a mini ductor. Yes, we're adapting and overcoming. That's right. We got Andy helping. More than just being a camera guy right now. Uh, he's lining every, uh, the hole up on the inside. Wait, why I hold the outside. All right, I don't really know if this is gonna work. I am drilling holes to mount my bracket. <laughs> I'm jumping in the car. Ready? Yep. So I don't know what is going on here, but this is not a 9 16 it's not a 5 8 it is not a 15, and it is not a 16. 15 is too small, 16 is too big. It's not too big for that crescent. No, this crescent doesn't fit. I don't know what's going on. I found the problem. It's only got two flat spots, the rest was round. And what size is the two flat spots? 5 8 Okay, it's tight. Brake line system is done. We've got the front suspension, wheels and tires, brake system, power steering, rear axle, completely in and done. So this thing is literally ready to roll if it had a heartbeat. But it's gonna have a heartbeat soon. Justin's gonna fill the rear end because we wanna make sure that when we take this off the lift, everything back here is finished. So that's the last thing we need to do to this rear end, put oil in it, and then we've accomplished a ton of stuff today. All right, so the gear oil that this Curry rear end requires for warranty purposes is gonna take us like three hours to put in. So we're not gonna bore you with that. We'll see you tomorrow. And it is tomorrow. All right, so it is the next day and this 1957 Chevy Bel Air is getting off the lift and we're pushing it outside. Now, the reason we're pushing it outside is because today we got a secret project. Me and Justin over here are gonna be working on the engine and transmission build on the Summit YouTube channel. So you're gonna have to go over to their channel to check that out. But Hillbilly's gonna be outside getting the LS conversion motor mounts installed and a few other odds and ends on this 57. So we're pushing it out of the building. All right, so now I'm gonna get back in and get to work on the engine and transmission with Justin, and we're leaving this to Hillbilly. Okay, so while Robbie's helping Justin build the motor, which you guys can watch that on Summit's videos, I'm outside making holes for the new engine mounts, because the style that this engine was, it was called, a, on Fords, they're called horse collars. On Chevy, I don't know what they're called, but it, the bracket bolts to the front of the block, and it's a big U, and there's a rubber mount on each side, and then bell housing had two rubber mounts, and that's how this motor was mounted in. The new motor ain't getting, it doesn't mount that way so we're putting actual motor mounts in it that's for the modern motor in order to do that there's two rivets that has to be i have to ground them and punch them out and then you got to drill two holes on the top for the top mount and then you bolt it down and this one side will be done then you do the same thing the other side it'll be done and then it will be ready for a motor okay so i'm removing the the brake line mounts so that way i can remove uh Persuade the brake lines away from the rivets so that way I'm not taking the chance of nicking them and putting a hole in them. Even the smallest little heat will cause a, hole, a pinhole in the brake line and then the brakes will not work. And we don't want that. The way to prevent that is move it away from any kind of heat source. Time to grind my rivets away. Munch time. Now I got both sides grounded off. I'll have the camera guy hand me the hammer and the black bar. So now you just beat them out. Rivets are now out, so let's get the uh, mounts installed and put the bolts into those two rivets. So that way I know where to drill my holes for the top bolts. And then the bolts slide in, take the nut, thread the nut on. Now I just gotta get them tightened up. I have to build a little bracket to bolt in place. For some reason, they cut a hole, not the factory, one of the people that owned it cut a hole in the frame for something, and that's where the bolt was supposed to go. So I want to cut a piece about that big, drill holes, bolt it to the subframe, and then drill one in the center, so that way we can have all four bolts holding it in place. So I don't have a tape measure, so I put the baggie right there just to see. So I'm going to cut it the width of this baggie, and that will be perfect. And there's our new 
bolt-in frame part until we get home and then when we get home we'll fix it the right way. I snuck our camera in on set at Summit Racing. Check this out. We have the 6.2 GM Performance 500 horsepower LS and you guys know how much I like my LS engines. We've got the GM Factory Accessory Kit and we have a TCI Turbo 400 that we're going to be putting behind this 6.2. It's going to be awesome. We're using as many Summit Racing branded parts possible and every one of these parts were in stock here in Talmadge, Ohio. So that's what makes this build so cool but I can't show you guys anymore, so. So as you can see, I made a, mark, a scratch mark right here to know that I shouldn't go past that. And right here, both lines are on the outside of each side of that hole. Stick it up in the hole. So I'll drill two holes back here, put it in place, bam, bam. Drill the other two. Grab the bolts and nuts kit. Find what size I need. That will do, donkey, that will do. Put it up in place. I'm just gonna get the mounter mount bolted on, so that way I can just drill all the holes at once. I'm gonna get some bolts dropped into these holes, because I don't wanna keep drilling and start drilling these holes and then have everything shift. When I have to I get these holes drilled and they notice that the bottom plate is shifted and then I have to water the holes out. Last bolt is done. Motor mounts are in, holes are drilled, bolts are tight. Plate is in and tight. Gotta drill three more holes to hold this front brake line. Cause right now it's just flopping. One here, here, and one in the center. I'm gonna get that done. Last hole drilled. This car is now ready for a motor to get put in. I'm curious if the speedometer works. One way to find out is you take a drill, put it on the cable, and just slowly spin it. There's no needle on it. Well, there's no needle, so we can't tell if the speedo works or not. Darn it. <laughs> Darn it. All right, so Hillbilly kicks some serious butt while me and Justin put together my 6.2 LS. So we're going to be driving this 1957 Chevy across the country to Utah. It's 2,000 miles, and we don't have windshield wipers. So we're going to be using one of our armor shield kits to ceramic comb the windshield so we don't have any issues if we come in contact with some rain on the way home. We're going to get this glass clean. You don't want to put your ceramic coating on a dirty surface. Once we get it all cleaned up, I'm going to show you just exactly how easy it is to apply the ceramic coating. Oh, look at that. Your ceramic coating's not gonna allow that dirt and grime to attach to your windshield. This window is gonna be hydrophobic after we apply the ceramic coating, which is gonna make that water bead right off if we get caught in a rainstorm like we did last year in the Charger. We are gonna be celebrating the 4th of July weekend with an amazing sale from Avalon King. We're offering you three Armor Light Shield kits for $99. That's right, $99 gets you three awesome kits to keep your car protected. But what's more, you buy five kits, you're getting free stuff off the website. You're gonna be getting a free water me. You're going to be getting free microfibers. Heck, you're going to be getting some shampoos and other awesome items on the Avalon King website. So make sure you hit the link in the description or in the pinned comment below and get yourself some armor shield. So what is ceramic coating? I'll tell you. It's freedom. It's freedom from tyranny of waxing and constantly washing your car. It fills the pores in your paint or any surface to create an invisible shield that protects your car from everyday uses for years. No more waxing. I'm going to let this dry. We're going to buff it off, but I'm going to show you just how easy this is to restore the rubber on on your bumpers, check this out. Look at that. Look at the sheen difference. I'm gonna coat half of this. Make sure it gets down into everything. It's glass-like sheen on anything it touches, like wax on steroids. It's very hydrophobic, meaning water and dirt just beads off. It makes everything look shinier and better. Head over to Avalon King's website right now because quantities are limited. So starting today, Friday, June 30th, through Tuesday, July 4th, you're gonna be getting three kits for $99. Buy five kits or more, you're gonna be getting wash mitts. You're gonna be getting microfibers. Heck, they're gonna throw you in some shampoos and other awesome items. Head to the website now by clicking the link in the description. Get yourself some awesome stuff for this freedom weekend and get yourself protected with Avalon King. Let's get inside. All right, so we've been working on this all day long. So make sure you guys head over to the Summit Racing YouTube channel. Let's get them to 200,000 so that we can come back out here and do really cool stuff. Maybe it'll come out to Utah and we'll do some sort of a buildup at my shop. Go watch the video of this buildup for the 6.2 LS and the Turbo 400 transmission. We're gonna go get the 57 Chevy. We're gonna pull it back into the studio and we're gonna put this engine in that car. All right, the moment we've literally been waiting for all week. I'm so excited. Yeah, it's exciting. Slow, slow. Whoa, whoa. Watch where you go and you gotta go up more. Okay, step going down. Nice and slow. Okay, we're, we've got a master cylinder you gotta be careful of. Go down. In. Oh, 
Can't okay, what stop us from going anymore? Are we oh, we're hitting right here. The ear, the old cross member. Okay, can we go back? Yeah. Oh, okay. Now down with the motor. Watch your steering, Robbie. I can't really see. Okay, we're on the steering arm. We're about to clear it. Okay, we're clear. Yeah, this thing's gonna. This thing's gonna go. <laughs> okay, it needs to come back half an inch. Okay. Okay, hold it. This sucker's gonna fit. It is so close. And now I can't get out because I'm too fat and I crawled in. Look at that! Robbie! Friday! We the motor's in it! We have Woo! a motor in the 57 and it looks so good. Yes, I am so excited. It's been an interesting week and it is Look at very this. satisfying to see how much progress we have. Look at this. It's almost like it was meant to fit. Like It's like not touching. It's like somebody has done this before and we it's got like- It's like Summit had like a bulletin on it and like what parts to get. This actually worked out really well. Not that I had any doubt. All I gotta say, we are 50 hours, three, sometimes four people, 50 hours. That's almost 200 man hours to get to this point. That is insane. That is crazy to think. But we did it. We did it. Yeah. Thank you, Summit Racing. This wouldn't happen without them. We're not done yet. We're not on the road. We're not in the clear yet. We have a 1957 Chevy Bel Air, two-door hardtop in Summit Racing headquarters with a 6.2 LS that we built today in the car. It's wild, but 6.2 turbo 400, nine inch. I mean, this- All the good stuff. I'm so excited. This is gonna be so <laughs> And look at all this room we have for activities. And look, he'll really can care less because it's not a Ford. He's just sitting there like, uh. I love this. I love this so much. This is the end of our first week. This was amazing. We had, we hit our milestone. The motor's in the car. No, we're not driving out of here. But you know what? It's been a ton of work. I can't think Summit enough. We're gonna go take a break for the weekend and we're gonna be back here Monday. So make sure you guys come back to see this thing get hooked up and we're gonna be driving it across the country. So as always, we appreciate you. If you enjoyed this video, go check out this one. It's gonna be a <laughs> <laughs>